So welcome everybody to pause. <laughs> it's easier than you think. And this is look. Looks currently. I see currently. That's right. We don't know what's <laughs> gonna happen, right? Well, fabulous things happen in our life. Um or is currently in in Las Vegas. And this is our third episode. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us, Luke, to share some insights of your fantastical journey. And uh, really, you know, I'm sure you've got many things that you would like to tell everyone and share with everyone to be like, you know what, guys, it's really easier than you think. Like, because you, you've been there. It's only when you have really went through things and been in the overthinking, been in the, uh, yes. I don't want to think, <laughs> you know, all the different spectrums of it um, and how you kind of put yourself out of, of really the quicksand. And I think a lot of people, you know, um, feel that sometimes they feel like they're in quicksand or they feel like they're being um shut down and you know there's a lot going on in the world today as we all know um but you know luke wanted to come on and share his story and it, you know it doesn't really just start in 2016 but you would say that was when there was a real crack that showed yeah i always think they are the i mean like when my father had depression, I, I everybody was telling me he was having a breakdown. I was like, "You're having a breakthrough." Yeah, it was it my apocalypse like in 2016, breakdown. and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, so it it certainly was yeah. the start of my breakthrough. Yeah, yeah, and tell me about you know in the 2016 for you, you you really you know. It was a, like a wipeout. Yes, out. I was in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I had multiple businesses and restaurants. And I, I was stripped to the roots. Every, I lost everything. I was, uh, yeah. you know, I was yeah. foolhardy, unconscious, willfully blind, arrogant. And the universe or what have you just wanted to show me, send me a message. And, and, and that it did. So I closed everything up, filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. And I was in a relationship for a number of years that everything just fell apart. So I had. But you said you were, you, uh, you were on. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I love that. Phrase it was crazy. In the midst of it all, in the, in the, <laughs> the enormous pain. And um, uh, it was, it was horrible. It was a tough time, but yet I knew something was telling me and, and I didn't understand what, it was in intuitive that something, I had this yeah. weird hope, like everything's gonna be fine in the midst of it all. And I think between the, the anguish and the pain and the anger, it would come through at moments. And I was yeah. guided, I was told to move to Las Vegas. And I, I lived in Las Vegas back in 1998. So it was like 18, 19 years since I'd been here. I didn't know anyone. So I yeah. I, my daughter was entering high school. She was a freshman. I said, let's, we're going to Las Vegas of all places for my, <laughs> my, my awakening, I came to Las Vegas. <laughs> Listen, you know, it's, it, it is where it's, wherever the universe sends you, where you're gonna have that, you know, vortex. And I think everybody, uh, uh, people watching this, um, I, I call it the kind of great migration. I don't think people have moved around the country uh, and uprooted themselves in the last two years. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the stats are on it, but I know that I've never really kind of known anything like it since, you know, maybe um, uh, like on a whole of the whole of America, not just like one place because there's a disaster, but, you know, maybe something like the, the mm -hmm. Great Depression, you sure. know, when people were, were migrating. So, you know, you really kind of upped uh, sticks and moved. But in 2017, you were, you know, you were reading a lot of psychology yeah, and spirituality, I felt like, right? Um, 
I, I was in a, it, it was in a very odd place. And I was, I started reading about psychology and spirituality, many, many books. And I hadn't had time in my life, in my career. I, I wasn't able to read books for many years. And I've always enjoyed reading, but I, it was probably a pause of 15 years. I couldn't really read much. And then I started. And you were reading like, so I read now 40, 40 books, books a year, about a year? average 40, 45. And yeah. whatever I'm doing otherwise, if I'm not yeah. working, I'm, I'm reading something somewhere. Uh, and I enjoy it very much. Learning and yeah. learning more about yeah. people, different yeah. aspects of others, their experiences, the world. And, and it just helps me with everything I do. No. Yeah. Yeah. But you, as you were reading it, you were still angry, right? You were still, you, you said to me that you were still externally I was, blaming yes. others. I was. And that went on for a while yeah. as I was taking it in. I think I just needed to process everything. And Oh, completely. And then it eventually I started opening up. I started opening up to, I was angry and hurt. And, and again, I was you know, fooling myself in many ways. And, and then I had more breakthroughs. Yeah. <laughs> what were some of the breakthroughs, be quiet. What were some of the breakthroughs that you uh, remember from that time? You know, or maybe even a book that you can say, this one really annoyed me or hit me or whatever it is you know do you remember any book or anything that really there's there's so many i think uh the untethered soul is a book i read that that i really enjoyed uh, i read uh, some deepak chopra mm -hmm. and, and many others uh, I, I think that what one of the key things that i started doing was i meditated i dabbled in it for a few years prior years prior in my life but never committed mm -hmm. seriously to it. And then in 2017, 2018, 2017, I started doing about 10 minutes a day, which is nothing, uh, but it's a start. So don't be, it's something. It's nothing, and but it's I something. To... <laughs> it's, I, I'd rather people do 10 minutes I felt like I nothing. wasn't going deep enough with 10 minutes. And then I committed to, in 2018, I, I started doing 20 to 30 minutes upon awakening every single day. And then in the afternoon, I do, 20 minutes in the afternoon. And I felt like that really helped me find stillness within. And it was a really beautiful process and changed my life in, in every way imaginable. I... And was that in conjunction? Because I know that you were also kind of reaching out to people from the past and forgiving people uh, and also you know, asking for forgiveness. You know, there there was things that you were doing, right? Uh, it is, so I, it opened me up and I, that... I became more patient, less angry until, and I felt the need as well to heal relationships. So I reached out to people from my past, even 10, 15 years more, business people who I had fallouts with, personal relationships, and I felt this urge, I just wanted to do it. And it was incredibly healing. Yeah. And everyone I reached out to was, was felt the same. It was really a beautiful process and everyone appreciated it. And I would say that now we're all in contact and have rekindled our friendships and started anew. Yes, yes. And d did it, you know, when, you, when your daughter saw you going through this, she was. you said she was a mm -hmm. freshman, right? You know, so she sees dad saying like okay we're up in six we're moving to vegas you know what i mean i've lost everything how has she seen your journey you know or what does she uh recognize in in yeah the i man think that she's i would say that's my with? favorite part of it is that she was incredibly brave and stoic she's a great kid and smart she she really witnessed this whole process and she i know it from my perspective and i can tell you but she sees it in her way and she talks to me about it and tells others as well and she saw me transform where oh, i became more awesome. patient and less angry less i had less angst and and uh i was more loving and caring and joyful in our relationship we always had a great relationship i, I feel like we were always close but now we're 
incredibly close and uh yeah it is so special when you see your parents you know uh do this work to do work on themselves and, and i think i i things. think i know she benefited from it immensely because she could see that we're 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 fallible we're human we make mistakes and I, I think in the process, I showed her or taught her through my actions and also sharing revelations with her that life is really beautiful and that we, there's, we can always start anew and it's a process. We're all here to evolve and life is, uh, is, a, is it's, it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful place to be. Yeah, and, and what a great kind of teaching for her that, you know, it, it doesn't stop, you know, you working on yourself, doesn't matter what age you are, you know. And has she read some of the books and um, taken on anything that, or has there been a book that you've said to her, oh, you need to read this, this is, if there's a, a book that you need to, like, see someone that's in college right now, if there was a book you know, when you were going through your thing in, in 2016, you would say to a young person, I wish someone had given me this book uh, when I was Yes, you know, so I would say that 24. a few things is that I would say, I send her, sent and send her articles and quotes and, and things that I learn all the time. She, appreciate, she appreciates it very much. She reads them. As far as books, I've sent her a couple. Some she's dabbled into, but some she's just not ready to read. And I've shared books as with others. If you need to be at the place where you're ready to take on, take in this knowledge. But also she is a meditator. And so she's taken that on. Oh, cool. She had had anxiety through COVID and starting college. She's a sophomore now. And through meditation, I taught her about the practice and what to do and and so she does it and it helps her and she's appreciative of it. So I tell her, you have such an enormous advantage over where I was and most people, you're, you're, she's 20 years old now. And you, to understand and have this knowledge at your age and you have so much runway ahead of you, it's, it'll be incredibly beneficial for your life. So she's a very appreciative of it. And she's a psychology yeah. major. Oh, excellent. So she's seeing how, you know, you know, psycho meaning the soul. Yes. <laughs> Which, you know, the soul is, is what needs um, the healing um, as a, well, I think it's been starved, you know, but I'll go into that another time this week. Um, so really in kind of 2019, you had this kind of higher self urging you to start like your business again. And you had, you had filed bankruptcy and everything. You had yes. had businesses so I, and, you know, um, they had went bust, but we'll talk about that in, in, a, in a minute of, of how you started to start to see, you know, yes. the patterns. Yes. Mm. Patterns. Uh, so the higher self at this point, you're still a little, you're so angry, but the higher self is urging you to start your business, which was really. It was. was. I was, was really very fortunate scary. when I moved to Las Vegas. I, I, I worked with some people. I did well financially, and I was in a in a in a work situation, a job where it was financially it was really tremendous, and I wasn't happy. I wasn't creative. It was working with a big casino corporation that I just did not enjoy the culture. And I felt like it was so painful to my heart and soul that I felt it literally pushing me. Like you have to get out of here. You have to get out of here. You have, and it was, it was like screaming to me and I had to follow that urge. So uh, I left that, that work situation and now, if you hadn't been doing your meditation and everything else and the work that you'd been in, you would have over. True. I, I feel like I wouldn't that. have noticed it because there's always too much noise. And meditation silences you, for at least for me, is to my, to my intuition and my higher self and what I need to do. So it was just yeah. urging me to stop and start a business 
I started a consulting business and it was scary because it was a whole new thing. Prior, I had restaurants and companies and, and I never did consulting, but I, I did my own restaurants. And then I started a, a company where I build restaurant concepts for casinos and hotels. And I just did it and had to do it. And I made, reached out to contacts and things just started, to, many coincidences happened. And I, I went back to past relationships mm -hmm. and got work. Uh, it was enormously scary. I, you know, leaving your job and starting something anew. And then, and then of course, uh, COVID hit in, in 2020. But I, I feel like, yeah, you know, I, in, 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 in 2019, yeah, I, I feel like I had some other breakthroughs where I started reading about self-love, the idea of self-love, and I started to practice it. And when, mm -hmm. I, and when I went through the process, I realized, you know, you're really an asshole to yourself a lot. <laughs> and, and, and I think most of us are. I was hard on myself. I would say negative self-talk, reels and reels and reels of what you did. Why'd you do this? Why'd you make that? You made so many mistakes. Don't do it again. And then I stopped. And then through meditation and practicing self-love, I found that I, I lost all the anger. I got to a point in 2019 and, and through to now I, it's really difficult for me to get angry. I don't even, now I'll tell you, I don't even get angry. Zero. I have no anger. Just doesn't come up. It's a lot of energy. That's why. It's a lot of energy and it's, um, and sometimes people's anger is a way to let off steam of frustration you know, of the pent up frustration or irritation. And so sometimes it goes and looks even. Yes, I feel like I had so many tamped down so, emotions and feelings that I had to release that that's where the anger came from. And I was angry for years through my childhood and, and what happened, uh, and that's another story, but you know that, Patty, my history. And yeah. it was all, like I said, it was, in, it had to be released and I released it through, you know, evaluating myself, self-regulation. And most importantly, you know, you can't say it enough meditation. It was to go through the process. And when I yeah. first started meditating, it was hard because I would sit and these feelings and emotions would come up. And it was really at the beginning, I'd say the first three to six months was really uncomfortable and it was rough but and when people speak of meditation my key to doing it is i find so many people find it mysterious and they can't sit and commit to it i i look at it like this i i punch the clock every day no matter what no matter how i feel i'm going to do it i sit and i sit there for that time on the timer and that's the commitment you have to make at least for me it worked and still does but now I won't miss meditation, yeah. not for one day. And I enjoy it so much. It's just part of my life. It's not a chore. Yeah. Well, it is, it is an act of yes. self-love. Yes. Yes, it's an act of self-love to yourself, to life, to being, yes. uh, to becoming, all of it. Now, you know, then... COVID kind of comes around and you start to kind of get a little bit deeper and then you, you know, you start to see the patterns, yes. you know, in your life of starting a business and I then did that destroying twice, a business. Twice, twice, twice before this. <laughs> and I had, I had, yes. to, I lost everything and yes. had to reinvent yes. myself. Yes. So and you, you start yes. to see that there's this pattern and uh, and you have a, an Akashic uh, Records reading, and it's basically, oh, you need to basically clear this, you know, or have the files. And you kind of get in touch with me at that point to, you know, you tell me that this is what you want to do. And, and I work with the Akashic Records at level three, and there's a reason why I work with them at level three and not level one. Um, but you, you, you know, 
my email exchange is to flush out, you know, because my belief is that it's not like, oh, I'm going to drop off my car at Paddy Mechanics and Paddy <laughs> Mechanics is going to change my oil and I'm going to go over here, have some lunch and a facial. That's right. Yeah, you weren't having that. <laughs> Yeah, because that was the email I got. It was like, okay, so do your thing. And uh, and I was like, well, this is what I will need from you. And you did not I, care I did for not. it. I didn't <laughs> care for it. I said, I, I came to you for this, Patty. And I don't <laughs> really, I don't need all this other stuff. Yeah, you came to me for, uh, like, I want to be Abundance. joyful. And I want this. And I want to be successful. <laughs> this. I want, I want, I want. Um, but I don't want to look at any of the aspects in me that is preventing and where yes, they're coming and you, from. After 20 email exchanges that I found annoying, uh, <laughs> you, you excavated all of that out of yeah. me. And honestly, I'm really grateful for the process. It was really uh, beautiful and, and revealing. I, I think it put me to the next level of awareness where all these things were, were, were hidden. I thought I was making all this progress and I'm, everything's really great. And there's always ways to go deeper and to get better at it. Yeah. Well, I think that's the, the aspect uh, is, is the deepening, not more stuff. Because that can also be avoidance. You know, uh, I'm going to, you know, uh, listen to another podcast. I'm going to read another book. But I really don't want to go any deeper yes. in why I have this pattern. And what I, and, and I remember, you know, saying to you at one point, you know, I, I think at the very, very beginning, I, yeah, I'm not the person right. for you. I was, I was rejected. <laughs> Yeah, because I was like, okay, well, my belief, because I, I told you what my belief was, that, you know, you can try and move things in the Akashic Records, but the microcosm of the macro of the Akashic Records is this lifetime. Yes. Well, it... and, and it's working with this lifetime of the things that are coming up in this lifetime that are repeats. There are duplications that you have the opportunity, no matter how ugly or how you don't, you know, resistant you are to it. This is where the treasure's at. This is where you're going to find That's the right. golden and, nuggets. Uh, <laughs> and you helped me dig deeper. I, what, <laughs> yes, at that moment when we had our first exchange and you rejected me, <laughs> I, I said, okay, well, Luke, this is a sign. <laughs> well, it, it's like I. I you know, for me, it's not even a rejection. It's like, I don't want to take something from you or pull something, a curtain back that you're not willing yeah, so or ready about the to rejection see. Piece, but that's exactly what it was. But no, 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 because I, I, want, I want, I, I, you know, I mean, there is a reason for the rejection and it's the same in your, in any spiritual work. The reason why you're not getting any further in your spiritual work, because you there's part of you that's so fearful or frightened to see what it is that you need to see or do or look at that you don't want to look at so if you are willing to do it you have to choose um a teacher a healer a practitioner whatever you want to call it um that is going to be willing to go there with you as you are kind of wing person that isn't going to flinch when something comes up. That's true. And you don't <laughs> flinch, Patty. So we, we, I reached back out to you and I said, no. let's go through the process. And, and that started it. And then after you helped me excavate all those things from my past and my patterns, which were really um, obviously revealing. And there were many things I didn't understand and see um, and then we did our tapping session, which was really great. And then we kept in touch. Because we're kind of yeah. like laying out the deck, right? We're laying out the deck so that 
you know what's going to come yes. when we get together, you know? You, you're, there's no ambushing of, oh my, everything's out on the deck, but if something does come up, I'm, 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 I'm willing to go there because we've unpacked and unlayered everything and in a way that is um, uh, vulnerable, but, you know, it's like being seen, but being seen and everybody's yes, okay I agree. with it. it was. It, it... Rather than going in and then being seen. Yes, and no, you build down. up that trust. I think through our, uh, through our email exchange, there was... I was revealing things that I was uncomfortable at the start and then I became more comfortable. And then I was just like, I just did it. And I got to know you more through this exchange and yeah. some, through some conversations. And then we had our session and I was completely fine sharing all of these things with you. And it, it, it but was at first enormously yeah. uncomfortable. And by the way, all this work isn't always comfortable. It's not, uh, yeah, that's yes, right. Yes, but that's what the yes. truth is at. Is that is when you have those oh I have to explore this no. further. There's something there. And then you go, oh I'm no. Here. I'm here oh, again. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right? And um it's it and, and that's just the kind of door opening, right? That's the that's the door that you need to go through. But um Unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, there is a mechanism in the human for avoidance that is um, really staggering. We all have it. I, re I, I really think it's staggering, you know, um, of no, 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 not me, <laughs> no. <laughs> Right. That can't be true. <laughs> it can't be true. And, and, and when you start to do um, really kind of deep excavation and work, it's uh, and, and being in joy, you know, because to me, joy is a sacred space. It's not to get nothing to do with, you know, well, I can be happy, right? I can be happy. Let's be happy, right? What did we do there? Did we think about our dogs? Did we think about our granny? Did we think about, you know, so, uh, like uh, an event? You know, there's happiness. We can choose happiness. But joy is a sacred space. And it's to do with life. It's to do why you've come, you came here. Because you would never have come here if you did not want to enjoy the experience yes, I agree of coming with that. here. Yes, and I've learned that. So it's definitely connected to the divine more. I agree. And than it was happiness. so much there I realized too through this whole process, there was I I throughout my entire life, no matter what level of success I ever achieved at times, it I couldn't permit myself to be joyful. It was I couldn't rest in those moments of achievement or it was like, okay, what's next? What's next? And I'm not good enough. It's not good enough. And I wouldn't allow myself to. Well, why do you think that is? Because I felt like, perhaps I felt like I wasn't enough. Yeah, huh? I think that's another gaslighting tool of humans. I think it's the gaslighting. Or I had to is, do enough, more and enough. achieve more and to be worthy of this and uh or i was afraid of things uh, and i think one of the one of the main things we went through in our session was that i was afraid you know i kept my head on a swivel i told you and i said that's i'm, I'm always looking behind my back for anything anything to fail again and that's generational or, or something catastrophic to happen and yeah. I, it was it's a level of fear and it's a terrible mm -hmm. place to be yeah and throughout this process i i've learned that the more I can remove the barriers of fear and judgment and self-loathing and doubt. I have so much more room, space for awareness, which invites in the joy and coincidence is, and the intuition that you're getting all day long. And, and knowing, and now you, you're aware when you are killing your joy. Completely. 
Absolutely. But you're a killjoy. You know, because I could see it through the email exchange that you were a killjoy. And so much so that I said, let's take a break from this email exchange and yes, go and read the big uh, leap. That's Gay Hendricks, right? Yeah, I read that. <laughs> yeah, Gay, uh, Gay Hendricks. I, I read, said, the, big read the big leap. I read the big leap before we did a session because I need you to know that you're yeah, the saboteur. Was... But I, I couldn't tell you you were the saboteur because at that point you were still fighting yes. it and you defended yourself towards me. So I was like, go and read this book and then fight I yourself remember, in I, there. I remember, and it was only several <laughs> months ago. I remember you told me, you asked me to read the book. I read the book in like two days and <laughs> I got back to you. I said, wow. I'm, I'm, this is me. I am sabotaging every aspect of my life. I always have. And now, now yeah. I see it. That's when the light bulbs went on. That was when you were like, oh my God, the, I, I, I get it. I'm the common denominator in yes. all of always these Always reaching patterns. an upper limit pro uh, and, uh, problem when you get there. It's like that ceiling, anything you, you achieve and then you find some way to unconsciously sabotage yourself, get sick, fail a business, yes. relationships, whatever it might be. It was extremely uh, just wonderful to learn that about myself and it changed everything for me. Oh, completely. Comple uh, uh, but for, for, for us uh, going in, it also brought a very quick awareness to you. Like I'd almost like, if you're a chef, right? Tenderized you with the beef, <laughs> with the hammer. <laughs> yes, so with a few extra blows. You up a yes. bit. And then I was like, <laughs> go read the book. And then you were like, uh, well, and, and, and okay. by the way, I yeah. just, I, what I realized is I was that, that was me. And I found that through the book, we're all that way, at least in the whole world. Yeah. And that's why joy is built on, you're yeah. not hardwired for joy. So we have to start hardwiring you for joy by looking at your blind spots, as well as, um, expanding yes. your bandwidth well that you're not like short circuiting <laughs> <laughs> twinking out you know when good stuff happens like what's gonna happen when's the shoe gonna drop like what's what's I the live my whole life that you know way. what's the catch but i think a lot of people live their life that way and that's definitely from yep. generational trauma that's definitely from uh, childhood um, PTSD. Um, that's definitely from, um, you know, being in the world and actually seeing the reality of the world so young uh, that you saw, you know, rather than, you know, some kids go through life and they don't see really what is happening out there until they're kind of old enough in their brain to kind of form, to kind of be able to process it. But I think when children have seen things and went through things, and then you've got the generations of your parents and your grandparents yes. also in that space, you, we all have work to do on, on that. You know, everybody has work to excavate and clear and and why us why us because we have the opportunity we are awake we have this to be able to have these amazing conversations and not be shut down not be told that you know who do you think you are having these conversations you know this is not for people like you you know <laughs> that's what it used to be like you know, so it was, um, you know, it was only really people who were in places of uh, stature or status, you know, that had the talking stick or the writers of history. So now we have the ability to share uh, with people, you know, our journey, because I, I do think sharing of uh, of stories and, and 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 upliftment and inspiring people 
um, is part of what even made AA so successful. You know, when people feel like they're going to so that they go to a meeting and they listen to a share. And what is that share about? That share is about, I did it. I got exactly. through it. Yeah, I think you it's that, it. that piece of vulnerability. And to it's hard. It's hard to share your story with people because you feel like we're all going to be judged. And that's what we do. We're judging machines. And by the way, less so, I, I'm trying to, I'm working on that as well. I, I judge a lot less now. I, I feel that it's... <laughs> You know the best way to really kind of work on your judgment is to go and do something that you have such judgment about. So I'll give you an example. I, I had judgment about a specific um, place. This was way before the pandemic. Um, that opened in Los Angeles and it was a, a yoga center. And I had a lot of judgment around it, its opening. And I got in meditation that when I meditated <laughs> to go and join and use it as a practice, a kriya, to clean my judgment about this place. So I was able to go and work on my judgment. And then other people asked me, oh, have you seen that place that's opened? Yeah, yeah. Everybody had judgment about it. I said, yeah. I says, I joined for a month. I says, it has to be my career. I says, to work on my judgment of the place by being a member. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, whoa people what you know who were in the bhakti community they were like wow that's hard that, that must have been hard i says it was definitely a practice you know to go to the place that you're having so much judgment about you know and clean it clean yes it. i feel it too with 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 complete neutrality of you know, really, I was there for my judgment. I wasn't there for the yoga. Yes. I was there and for my judgment. And it's judgment's always limiting. In that. Yes, and it also it lets you uh, kind of label things rather than... Uh, it is disconnection. It, it is disconnection. It, it, it's, it separates other, you from right? others. So uh, rather than being connected, it separates you. So now when I judge people or situations, I'm learning and I'm not perfect, I catch myself in the process. That's the key. And I say, okay, well, maybe I don't understand this person or their experience. How can I help them? How can I be of use to them? Uh, like in my work and what I do, uh, or a situation that I don't fully understand. And every single time there's something, some perspective or nuance or, or in the context that I don't get that is later revealed and I, I'm wrong. I'm wrong in my judgment in some way. Yes. I, I, well, I, sometimes we can kind of transcend the right and the wrong of it. Sometimes it's just like exactly. society telling you that this is uh, unsavory or, or it's this or it's that without, you know, like, I think we have discrimination for a reason, you know, where we are discriminating between things. You know, it's like, you know, who do I send my, my money to? Do I send it to Doctors Without Borders or do I send it to, you know, the Red Cross? Do I send it to, you know, so in that moment, I'm leaning, right? Now, say I had uh, my my grandmother when she passed, right? She had a um these nurses that came in the mcmillan nurses that came into her house to help her when she was in hospice and now we didn't give money to any other charity we didn't give it to you know this charity or that right we gave it to the mcmillan nurses because we'd had a direct effect by that just like when people are doing a a, 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 a ALS or you know they're doing um 
leukemia or whatever, usually they've had an experience yes. of it in their lives. Usually they know someone. So that's, that's us discriminating against other things. So I think we have to have this kind of healthy use of being able to say, that's not for me, but I, I don't need to have like- Right, like I don't need to have some negative attachment it. to it. It's not for me. <laughs> I can move on. Yes, I can be like, you know what, that's not for me right now, but it might come around again. But it, uh, like, I, I've noticed it. And maybe I need to look into it a little bit further, you know, so that I'm having this kind of healthy aspect of what you would say is the spectrum of judgment, you know, which is, you know, uh, uh, discriminating between one, I'm, I'm using charity as a, you know, everybody you know, can really kind of get behind what, what, uh, when you're choosing a charity, you know, while you're, you're drawn to that, but why not the others? Are you, you, you know, it's, it's a judgment call, you know, for you. So I think really, um, looking at the things that are irritating us and why they're irritating us, because sometimes they're irritating us because, you know, someone's doing something that you want to do. And it's making yeah, you annoyed. What part of me is causing it. this to come up? What is inside of me that is making this happen? Why do I have this yes. this judgment or envy or trigger? Or trigger. So I always try yeah. to I look into myself, like where, what in me is unresolved that I need to look at deeper. Um, it's 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 teaching me something. Yes, because I think then your your collaborations are healthier. You know, not collaborating with people to um, use them. You know, you're not collaborating from a place of scarcity not the, or lack. They're not the means to the end. Yes. Whether that's a relationship, it's it's a collaboration that's built on joy. Or oh my god, I would really really enjoy working with that person. Or I would really enjoy doing this. You know, and then you're kind of building your muscle of enjoying and it is easier than you think you know you've told us from 2016 all the little acorns that you have done it did you i mean you didn't wake up you know and be like okay i'm gonna jump in and do this you started with your 10 minutes a day and then you started to really oh i'm enjoying yes. this uh, absolutely with myself I'm enjoying, you know, doing this, this, this being of me and, and being in my own bo body and my own skin. I'm enjoying it. And, and I think if people can just start with that, it is. And like, when people say, you know, oh, I, I'm going to demystify meditation, we're going to demystify, I don't want to demystify sacred spaces and the great mystery of life. How dare people want to demystify? Yeah, I, I don't. If you're doing that, then you're not doing it. It's just, yeah, it's it's being. You know, you, there's no demystification of uh, the great yeah, mystery. It's, to me, meditation is less doing and more being, and sitting with yourself, seeing what comes yes, up. Yes, it's just being in that unraveling of yourself, of seeing the parts of you that you get the glimpse of which is your true voice or your true essence and you get little every time you do it you get to be uh more you and it could be like a a millimeter and you might it's, be working with very, that millimeter it's very for, expansive and i found that the more as i've meditated for over these years is that i am more life is meditation for me. So I sit and I do it, but throughout my day, I am more aware and I catch myself with negative emotions or thought patterns and I, I, I cycle them out. They're gone and I recalibrate myself. I find that I'm more open to everything and, and I don't have to have my opinions and my, from, via my upbringing or uh, about everything. Well, that's, that, that's a lot of, um, yeah. that's a lot of defragmentation right there. It's like a defrag of the brain, you know, when you, when you start to uh, remove that. How, you, you've yeah. just done your level mm -hmm. one, you know, your pause and joy level one. 
how has that being tuned in, being tuned into the kind of uh, universe and the, the codes, um, how has that uh, it changed your, or what have you seen? Because you've been traveling, you've went to France, you know, you, you, you basically hopped on a plane right after your, the class. So I'm interested to know how that has affect, has changed your meditation or amplified or enhanced your meditation or what you've noticed about um, since it's been a month and yes. we, we'll have that conversation this a, week. Or I'll tell you, after the, the, the session with you, the day session and the attunement, I felt... A profound shift. I think I even told you the next day, I feel like once I went to sleep, I woke up, I felt like I had a complete system reboot. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I know <laughs> that I'm operating at a much higher frequency vibrationally. And, and now I feel like there's, yeah. I, I feel elevated. I feel like there's less pressure on my mind and brain. I don't, I'm able to enjoy things so much more. I see, uh, uh, the meaning and beauty and, and so many things. I had a wonderful time when I was in France, uh, traveling vineyards and restaurants and with, with my friends. And it was really that I allowed myself to enjoy it for the first time ever. And I've been on many of these, these experiences and journeys yeah. throughout my life. Uh, was there any moment in that, in that trip that you were in where you noticed um, the growth of, how you would have been, how you wouldn't have been able to handle the 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 joy of what you were doing, and or as a, as opposed to or be present in it and really kind of not kind of disconnect yes. from it. Or make yeah, it I would say for that it. throughout each day, as there were times where think old patterns would creep in of where something or I'd worry about work or I had to do, and I said, "You don't need to do this," and I it would quickly just leave my my mind. And I was able to enjoy the experience. I felt like just meeting people yes. and doing what I was doing was just so much more easy, easier to do, easier than ever. Yes. Yes. And energetically, it's easier than you think. better than ever. But, Sleeping, well, my sleep has been improved as well. Oh, yeah, that's really interesting because you have a... Um, a like a sleep log you know that it it tracks your sleeping um and since the attunement what has been the the difference in your sleeping the difference in my the difference is the attunement my sleep was markedly uh, you know much better so i i have a sleep i have several i have two sleep tracking devices and it, I was, I sleep longer. So I was sleeping instead of six, six and a half, seven hours, eight, eight and a half hours, which is indulgent for me. I was in deep sleep for longer periods every night, much longer. And my REM sleep is where, you know, deep sleep is where your body does all the healing and REM to, to, to summarize is where you you kind of reboot your system and take in what you've learned and and processes if i can simplify it everyone that went from an hour and a half to i had nights three three and a half hours of rem sleep and i still do it's enormous and that's a lot of rem sleep by as far as scientists are concerned in books i've read about sleep so that's changed a lot i feel like my yes because the disruption of the sleep and the and the rhythm is um a lot of you know it can create a lot of anxiety it can create a lot of like disease even you know when you uh do not True. have and practicing the reiki on myself and others so especially on myself i notice where i the energy comes through me it's easier to access in the process and by the way you i've done it every day and it's it, i feel yeah, like it I comes through have. more powerfully i feel like there's more heat energy in my hands not nearly as much as yours yours are like flamethrowers yeah. your hands are like <laughs> i was like what well, it's like i feel like the sun's <laughs> beaming on my face when you when you rake with me it's it, it, i so i feel like all of that's really profound and when i do the reiki so through the process i feel the energy moving in the areas and after it i feel just amazing i feel 
lighter. I feel clear. Yeah. And I want to do it every day. That's it because I love the experience so much. Yeah. It is. And that's also an doubt. act of self love. You know, because when definitely when you're feeling out of sorts, right? What do people do? You know, what do people do when they uh, feel out of sorts? Well, some people go and they have a, they smoke some weed, you know, some people go and they, you know, uh, check out, you know, whether it's, you know, Netflix and chill, whether it's and the scrolling. social media go, going down the rabbit hole. Yeah. I mean, the banquet is there. I go and I reiki myself. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the tool that I'll lift. Um, uh, because I know that it's going to, you know, increase my immune system and it's, I'm going to feel a shift later. You know, like the other day I was like, you know, I put a timer on so that I don't go deep, you know, but out, out of 21 minutes so that I, you know, 20, 20, they say after 20 minutes that you can go into kind of a deeper sleep, you know, and then you, um, Mm -hmm. You can be sluggish for the for for a time, you know, because you went deep. You know, you went for half an hour or forty minutes, and it takes you a little while to get back in your body, and it's disruptive. Whereas if you have those power naps, and to me, like raking myself and napping, I'm the, I'm the power. I'm a power napping champ. <laughs> please, that's 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 like you know, it's people that have just taken their energy drink. You know, <laughs> that's like yeah. I'll, okay. I'll, so <laughs> since the attunement as well, I'll, some other things I noticed is that I I'm not a big drinker, but I, I love wine, and that's it's part of my business. And I was in France, so oh, there. Yeah, okay, so there France. was some exceptions. I'll tell you, <laughs> I, I, I consume. So let me start. Let me. I consume less now. I just don't feel like I need to. I, I just drink less because I don't feel like I need it, and, and I don't drink a lot. When I was in France, I drank a lot. I was in you know bordeaux and loire and in some of the most beautiful vineyards in the world and well, winemakers were, were just you were there to you know take. we were opening bottles a couple at lunch a couple at dinner and uh, what what normally would have made me hung over i woke up not one day hung over not one time i never had to pop an aspirin and that was a huge i noticed that was wow. enormous because i drank more than i normally do and I had no effect. It had no effect on me. It was odd. Also, wow. I would say that, except for when I was in France. Because you're also doing it with work. It's kind of like when you're in Correct. ceremony, you know, it's like with, right? When whiskey's done in ceremony, um, whether it be a burn supper, you know, a rabbi burn supper, or whether it's a, uh, to do with um, the quake, you know, where you're, you know, pouring the whiskey and everybody's drinking from it, you know, around in a circle, kind of like a, like the peace pipe that we do it with whiskey. It's a, uh, and a quake is like a friendship cup. Um, you know, people don't, it's not, it doesn't affect them because it's done ceremonially. And I think when you're going for work and you're doing things and you're kind of tuned into oh, that and it's a joyful thing rather than I'm, I'm having like, a half bottle go unconscious bottle I, kind of i wasn't numbing it numb was out, appreciation numb out. yeah it was, I think it was, the, the, the intention of numbing out is is what makes you feel uh crappy yeah, the I would next say day and crappy about you because you know that you did it and you know that you were doing it for whether it was dutch courage or whether you were doing it to numb out or whether you were doing it because of nerves or whatever but you know that you were using it for some other purpose, not using it for joy. Kind of like when you're at a wedding. You know, when I'm at a wedding, I was at a wedding recently in Colorado and I was drinking and I was like, I, and I was drinking 9,000 feet <laughs> That'll get you. up in the mouth. That's hard. <laughs> oh, that'll get you and I was fine. <laughs> because to me, it was a sacred space. It was a wedding. Um, so it's not, you know, and I was in the joy of it and enjoying, you know, meeting, meeting the people there, but it was, uh, yeah, I think I, that doesn't mean to say I didn't see people that were, you know, not happy and at the wedding yes. and drinking. No, I think that, yeah, I think it was the appreciation <laughs> of where I was, the vineyards, the history and the wine is such a beautiful story. I mean, these, these grapes 
in these, they suffer. Yeah. And it's like humans, they suffer. And the more they suffer, the more character and beauty they have. And I was, it was such, I was in such awe. Wow. And I think I was in more awe than I've ever been and with meeting the people behind them and, and enjoying it. And I think that's probably why it was a sacred, like, sacred experience. I, yeah, because I think you are doing that there you really have to enjoy and also sometimes the generations and the ancestry of it oh it's and yeah i was on vineyards that are hundreds hundreds of years old generations of families growing it's yeah. wonderful yes yeah and i think i think um you know that connection to your roots and that connection to uh, um the suffering of of your ancestors who were persecuted or you know um things happened to them where there was no i mean there was no csi or there was no uh investigation because you know uh you were in you know yes <laughs> the duke and duchess you know it, it, it was there was no and that was really the turn of the 1900s, you know, but before that there was um, very, very little. So people did suffer and people, um, you know, really did have, you know, like they were looking over their back and they were, you know, they had certain things that they did to kind of keep their family safe because, um, a lot of people didn't uh, go by the rules, you know, and they weren't out for seeing you doing well. And I think that's where a lot of people's even um, ancestral kind of psychic wound of being mm -hmm. seen now in this lifetime. If you don't clear that, it's sometimes coming from you know, something that happened a long time ago, and you might not even know which which sure, grandmother so or which grandfather decided to open up a business and he was, you know, uh, people destroyed or, or people, you know, didn't like it's it. It's embedded in your cellular cetera, memory, is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a psychic wind that comes down through the generations of, you know, they call it in Australia, the tall poppy syndrome. You know, where if the poppy grows too high, they cut the poppy's head off. Well, we're all doing that to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I think people do it to themselves because of these wounds, yes. you know, that have come down of, oh, you know, don't, don't shine too oh, yes. bright. Don't think, you know. Yeah, that kind of aspect. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, the, the work's never really done. It's, but what is done is you enjoying finding your blind spots. You enjoy starting to excavate. You enjoy, um, and, you know, and, getting deeper in your practice. That is what changes. That because, like, going back, circling right back to where you started, you know, how you were like, why are you making me do all this? <laughs> I, <laughs> Rather than yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. And also, <laughs> self-expression is. Uh, I think we're afraid to express ourselves or to be judged. And I remember you. You were actually making fun of me, um, in the emails and in our sessions and in our chats. Like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to express myself. Oh, but please don't judge me. Please don't judge me. You know, <laughs> I remember. And I was like, you're right. You're absolutely right. And. Uh, so yeah. if we could get beyond that and really, it's a beautiful thing to express yourself without really caring about what people think. And that's hard because people are judging you and they may yeah, say something. Yeah, but you know what? It's, it, God, how colorful people really are. I know how colorful they are. And, you know, because people come to me and tell me, you know, well, I can tell you this. I don't tell anybody else this, they'll lock me up. <laughs> but, you know, and, and, how, and, and I feel everybody else is cheated. Like the privilege I have is actually seeing who people really are. And they're actually much more interesting than what yeah. they front. Oh, absolutely. And they're deeper and they're more interesting and more um, 
and they're we're, really we're all smart. hiding under veils of insecurity and uh, i'm learning and yeah. you've helped me in the process to express myself more openly and, and really not care and I, I think one thing you said was who it's not my business what they think of me and and i think of that so whenever i have that yeah. pop up and that's, i and think that's, of that no. and it's incredibly helpful so I care much, much less. Yeah. Yeah, it because is. it's easier than you think. It's just easier than you think. And when you keep on saying that, it's and even at some of the big things that you're gonna do, because you're you've got uh, your own podcast and you know your uh, your cooking show mm -hmm. and lifestyle show that's um, yes on the building and. You know, it's it's definitely something that we do to get out of our comfort zones, but it's also kind of like, wh why am I trying to get out of my comfort? Like, why am I just not enjoying doing what I love doing, which is sharing my cooking knowledge? Like, we yeah. talked about the air dryer. Remember when I was like, oh, the, yes, air the dryer. air fryer. Like, what is this thing? <laughs> and um... an air dryer. Yeah, I mean, I just out that you could do eggs in the air dryer you know like i mean just things that you are like my mother just fight she just got one as well and we're ex and it's so cool because we exchange you know like what we learned today about an air dryer that you can do you know and it's it's um just fun you know to enjoy um yeah, sharing yourself sharing, with others unabashedly you know, and we, not caring you know. and I, I know that if, if whatever i'm doing in my podcast or my shows if I'm not my, I can only share my, people want to see your true authentic self. And if I don't open myself up to that and move beyond that fear and fear of judgment, I'll never be who I am. And people won't, they'll, people know instinctively that you're yourself or not. You can't. Absolutely not. And, and let me tell you, sometimes people watch people because they know they're not being authentic. <laughs> because they enjoy that too. Yeah. Oh, oh did absolutely. you not realize well, that? People not realize that you people actually enjoy watching because they're like, "When's the mask <laughs> gonna fall? When's the mask gonna fall?" And I will enjoy that immensely, you know. So there, there is definitely, <laughs> you know, I think it's a fascinating time, but it's 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 exhausting to have that judgment of just being like because if you're seeing that mask you know yeah i mean look at we're all wearing them we just need to keep pulling them all off in meditation and our practices and everything that we do uh is an opportunity to get to know ourselves a little bit deeper and a little and bit to reveal better. ourselves and, to the world um, and reveal you know aspects of ourselves that we didn't even know was in there that are the best part of ourselves because we always think that we're going to excavate and find more kind of um awful stuff <laughs> right but that's just really the stuff that is preventing us being this all those person, barriers this great person this joy yes so it's it's we're really kind of cheating ourselves of that and that person is what is calling you forward right that person is what had you know the oddly hopeful you know in 2016 when you said i was oddly hopeful that's the person that was pulling you to start the business again move and start your life all over again right that thing that knew um it's going to be easier than you think but you need to True. shut down the and thinking. it's uh, honestly so to, uh, you have to commit to the work like i said punching the clock throughout the process and experience some discomfort and pain however it's not that hard and i feel that all these things and these barriers we're talking about i've come to the point where if i just notice them and sit with them not even in meditation in meditation and in my normal life even if it's just for a moment I move beyond them. I remove them. It's just that easy. And you get to a point with practice with all of this and building your, your, you know, your, your endurance of, of awareness and, and creating it throughout the day that you're, that you up level and you're, you're at a point where you can do this. And. Oh, completely. And 
I would like to, you know, sit for a moment and let people kind of bask in your energy and our connection and everything that you've shared today and really kind of get a hit, <laughs> you know, from that it is, it's easier than you think. And I'm gonna remember where Luke was and he got through it and he started fresh not that long ago, six years ago, from being completely wiped out. Starting over in a new city, just pressing that reset and saying, okay, today's a good day to sit with myself. Today's a good day to kind of start to reduce the judgments. Today's a good day to become a little bit more me. I'm going to let that in. into my heart. And I'm gonna drop out of my mind and into my heart. And welcome some ease into my life. Thank, and you, thank you so much, Luke. Appreciate it. Thanks, thank everyone, you. for joining. And that was awesome. I'm sure a lot of people will um, sit with some of your words and um, hopefully have maybe some clarity or some encouragement that they can do. Um, these things as well, just starting with acorns. It is. Because it's easier than you think. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.